The second Sunday of Easter is commonly known as Low Sunday, chiefly because of the low spirits of Jesus' followers and disciples following his death, before Jesus confirmed he has risen from the dead. Hello Sunday for our nation this morning, mourning the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. And even more so, Hello Sunday for us as a church family, mourning the untimely death of the Reverend Carol Gill, priest in the Church of God, and for so many years, your serving priest here in Thornhill and Wickley. Carol will be deeply and sadly missed by all of you, all of us, her friends and her colleagues, and we hold Roy and Tracy in our hearts and in our prayers at this time. In our service this morning, we dedicate it to Carol's ministry, to her memory, and to her eternal peace in and resurrection glory. The Easter candle is lit to remind us that when Jesus rose from the dead, he defeated the power of death and hell. And we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So as we bring ourselves into the presence of God, we pray together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence and omission, through weakness and weakness, through our own and deliberate faults, through we are truly sorry, and we repent and confess of our, our sins, and we pray for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that it has, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. We hear the assurance of God's forgiveness for all that is past. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
have a special collect for the church this morning. Eternal God, our Maker and Redeemer, grant us with your servant Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and all the faithful departed, the sure benefit of your Son's saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day, when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promise through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for the word of God in our readings this morning. first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard. So that, you, that, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, while we are walking in, in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you, so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
They stand for the gospel reading. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When it was evening on that day, on the, that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words that come from my lips come from you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please sit down. <laughs> Low Sunday. When I looked at the internet, the reason I found that we could call it Low Sunday is basically because um, it's a low for the church after um, the high of Easter. But I prefer that similar version. Thing, yeah, it? similar thing, but I prefer that version to what I found. And as already has been mentioned by Anne, we have two deaths um, Prince Philip and the Reverend Carol, um, and I'll talk more about Carol as we go through um, this talk. But one of the things I've been thinking about is what is a hero, and one of the definitions I found on the internet is a person who is admired for their courage, outstanding achievements or noble qualities. And Thomas is mentioned a number of times in the Bible, but there are a couple of times that we're probably most aware of. The one that we're most aware of is today's Gospel reading, where Thomas isn't present at um, when Jesus first appears to the disciples, and the disciples tell him all about what happened, really excited, you can imagine, he's risen, he's there. And Thomas says, I don't believe you. I'll have to see it with my own eyes. I'll have to see the hands, the, ne the nails, the marks of the nails in my hands, the blood coming from the side. I'll have to see all those, those wounds. Following week, Jesus appears again, and Thomas sees these things and says, I believe my Lord, my Master. But Thomas is known as Doubting Thomas because of this, and it's still a phrase that we use today. Somebody 
just add to what we're saying, you might hear somebody say, he's a bit of a doubting Thomas. One of the other things though, one of the other places though that Thomas appears is in John 11 verse 16. Now this is when Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead. We have that um, famous verse, the shortest verse in the Bible when Jesus wept because of the death of his friend Lazarus. And Jesus, after his risen Lazarus, says, I have to go to Jerusalem. This is where my ministry lies. This is where I have to go now. And all the other disciples, apart from Thomas, says, no, don't go there. You'll be killed. It'll be awful. And Thomas comes out and says, let us, let us also go so that we may die with him. So on the, we have a contrast here, which is very human. We have the doubting Thomas who doubts that Jesus has been raised from the dead. And we have this person of great faith, great courage, who says, let's go with him, let's be prepared to die with him. When we think about heroes from history, those people weren't always heroes in their day. I was thinking about different people who we would regard as heroes now from history. William Wilberforce, who saw the abolishment of slavery in 1807. Not a hero in his day. Oscar Wilde, a great fashionable figure, um, regarded by a lot of people as a hero for a lot of his life, but then he ended up in Reading Jail, um, and there's a famous ballad of Reading Jail, for having had a gay relationship. Very much, I think, regarded as a hero now, but certainly not in those last years of his life, he died in disgrace. Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was a person who refused to stand up for a white person on a bus when the laws in the 1950s and 1960s in the USA said that um, black people had to stand up for white people if they got on a bus, and Rosa Parks dis disagreed with that. She decided not to do that, and the civil rights movement developed from that. And it got me to me thinking, which heroes from our time will history recognise as heroes, but we might not recognise now? Um, I thought of Greta Thunberg, for some people a hero, for other people a person who we really don't like, the environmentalist. She suffers from autism, but stood outside her school and became a national figure for environmental. Um, another one that came to mind was George Floyd. He was the um, black man who was shot by um, an officer in the United States and started off the Black Lives Matter movement. Difficult to know which heroes from our time will be regarded by history as heroes. Thomas, though, was very human, but very much a hero, I think. He was prepared to go to Jerusalem with Jesus to die. He was honest about the doubts he had about whether Jesus had risen from the dead, both very human. It got me to thinking, who are my heroes, or who are your heroes? Are you a hero to others? Are we heroes to other people? We, we don't know. I suppose somebody who could be regarded as a hero is Carol. She served our church for many years. Um, I think she was even here in Lindsay's time, which I think must be going back to 2000. I'm, I might be mistaken about that. Yeah. She was. So Lynn, Carol was here as a retired priest in 2000. And she served with a number of other priests who were incumbent here. She served with Lindsay. She served with Sue. She served with Debbie. And she was being loyal to all those people. She was honest. She certainly gave me feedback when I, I needed it. And I think feedback is always useful. Constructive feedback is always helpful because it helps us to learn and it helps us to understand what we need to do. But she never said anything like, you're rubbish. She always kind of gave me things which could help me to change and to improve what I was doing really really helpful but takes courage she was inspiring she was kind 
She had some amazing achievements. Her sermons were some of the most inspirational I've heard. They were usually quite short, but they were usually quite straightforward and I understood them. And I usually went away thinking, yes, I'm going to change what I'm doing. That gives me something to think about. Amazing achievements. A person of service and a person who influenced me quite a lot. Which leads me on to, I guess, my ultimate hero, and hopefully your ultimate hero as well, Jesus. Thomas is quite right when he says, my Lord, my God. Jesus was the Son of God who died on the cross for our sins and raised and was raised from the dead. It's a very simple message. It's the essence of our faith. And that is why we're here this morning, to worship God <coughs> and to celebrate in this Easter season the joy that Jesus is risen from the dead and that we can try to follow him and be a hero, just as his followers were, just as Carol was, and try to show those qualities to other people that Jesus showed to us. So... Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please stand. Before I just say that, I, I do want to just say one thing that I forgot to say. I believe Carol is now with Jesus the person who she loved and served all her life. And we will miss Carol so much. I you know she did so much for me. But it is a joy that she is now with the Saviour and in heaven. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one, one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit now for our time. As you know, we've heard this week of the sad death of Prince Philip and listened to the many tributes to this much beloved husband of our Queen. And in this day, Gary and Linda rang a muffled bell for you yesterday at 12 noon. We pray in remembrance of prayer written by the Bishop of Leeds. Lord God, who has made us in your image, we thank you for the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, for his life and all he has given to his people. We commend him to you in his death, and we pray for the Queen and the royal family as they grieve and mourn. We commend him to your love and mercy 
in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to life eternal. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father God, life seems to go around in a circle with the same harrowing events confronting us. We pray that the problems in Northern Ireland will not be allowed to get out of hand again. We pray for those being tormented and imprisoned in that huge country of China. We pray for those in Hong Kong who are being denied the right of freedom and action. We think of those countries still without vaccines for COVID as we welcome yet another new vaccine to ourselves. We pray for equality and the spirit of sharing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father God, as life starts to get a little bit nearer what we knew in February 2020, we ask that we can all react in a positive and helpful way and obey the rules just a little bit longer. Give courage to those still shielding and those who still will not go out. We pray for those suffering hidden mental health issues. May they find healing. We pray for those we know, those we know of who are ill. Christine, Steve, Amory, Alison, Isabel, Jill, Margaret J, and Rachel. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Sadly, too, we heard yesterday of the death of our much loved retired priest, Reverend Carol Gear, after a long illness. In her special way, she was a much loved wife, mother, and priest. As a priest, she served at Hanging Eaton as curate and vicar. The only person I have heard of for whom the parish petitioned for her to be their vicar when a vacancy occurred. She's been loyal to Lindsay, Sue, and Debbie here, and especially at Ripley. Always there, leading the prayer chain, going to services, preaching, stepping bookstore. Buggy prayers and much more. Remembering those things, let us pray for her. Lord God, who has made us in your image, we thank you for the life of Reverend Carol and all she has given to us. We commend her to you in death with love and pray for her family who grieve and mourn. We commend her to your love and mercy, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection, to life eternal. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. When we some of the words from our, our first hymn this morning, we didn't sing the first. Name him Christians, name him. With love strong as death, with his own wonder and with bated breath, he is God the Saviour, he is Christ the Lord, ever to be worshipped, trusted, and adored. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. Brian for those thoughtful and inspirational prayers. Will you please stand to share the peace?
The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be towards the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we count, thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Michael and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Amen. Father, who Amen. art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Let's pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just before we finish this morning, I think Diane would like to come forward and just say something this morning about Carol's ministry amongst you. really add um, anything else to what's all been said <coughs> but we all know how much we appreciated Carol she was so lovely and um, she was very faithful um, just had uh, she just she just loved our churches as, as we loved her and um, she was gentle she was kind she was caring always had a listening ear for us and offered John and I as church wardens words of wisdom um, and church wardens before then she was always reliable, um, and on a personal note, um, Carol will always have a special place in my heart. We loved her. Thanks, Diane. A lovely tribute. Is there anybody else who would like to say anything this morning before we finish? Please stand then for a blessing, which will be the remembrance blessing this morning. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Thank you for staying. Um, it was lovely to see you all. Um, despite this being a week of national and benefit morning. Uh, contributions to the food bank via the South.